Okay. So it's the bridge problem, it's not us. Really? Yeah. So it's not us recording? That's nope. the problem? It's the bridge that's having the problem. So as soon as you get this set up, Connie, I need you to go back upstairs and send out an email to everyone to let them know that we're having problems with the, with the, bridge. With the bridge. Right, and they won't be able to call in today, and we hope to get it resolved before the next one. Okay, well, that's important. Okay. okay. Okay, everyone, we're going to make one more run at this. This is kind of what we have been able to determine. The problem is not here. The problem is that whoever's controlling the bridge that we're trying to phone into is not allowing it to work. So those only affected are those who are not here in the room. So we will not be able to do the bridge today. Connie's on the way upstairs. She will be sending an email out to everyone to let her know that the bridge is not functional. It was working earlier, but for some reason we have a technical difficulty outside of what we can control. So we will carry on with the meeting. It's as if though it was, everyone was here. It is being recorded. Uh, they can always come in and listen to the recording if necessary, but uh, unfortunately the bridge is failed. Was Chris Christie involved? Oh, God. Uh, I can't help it. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, so let me go back and kind of... Uh, <laughs> Let me go back one more time just for those who joined us late. We are, uh, have approved the outcomes. We're moving on to the recommended objectives. The staff recommended was uh, for Regional 1 objective. That had a motion made and there was received a second. Again, based on where we're at now, is there any discussion from any member of the authority that's here today on the verbiage that is provided as Regional Objective 1? If there is no discussion, then can I see it by a show of hands, all those in favor of the motion? Mm -hmm. We're not voting. I'm just wanting to know if, if it's okay to move it forward to the full board. Okay. By show of hands, this one is uh, ready to move to the board. The board will vote on it uh, at the next uh, monthly meeting. The supporting objectives for outcomes one, two, and three have already been previously approved by this group. We will therefore move on to Mr. Calvert, and we will start with regional objective four. And at this point, we'll start with, uh, we'll do the regional objective and supporting objectives as each item comes up. We'll stay with that outcome until we're done with it. Mr. Calvert. So we're going to have a little bit of a, a tag team presentation. I'm going to maybe set up the sort of task and discussion that you're going to have this evening. Jerry's going to provide some context, and hopefully between those two things, you will land at a place where you feel like uh, you can be having an informed uh, conversation uh, this evening. Uh, so a little bit of background, um, because I know we have some uh, INVIC members, former INVIC members here. We also have some folks that maybe haven't participated um, as much uh, at this level, so I wanted to provide a little bit of background, uh, as I'm sure – People around the table have heard in one venue or another, uh, Dr. Cog and stakeholders have been working on a revised MetroVision plan for the region for four years or, or more. Uh, periodically during that time, we have made presentations, um, given updates to both um, INVIC when it existed as well as to the, to the, to the directors. Um, uh, we've also held several orientation sessions with interested board members to know a little bit more about the MetroVision plan, uh, really kind of the, more the background and history uh, side of things. Uh, and uh, we released a full draft of the plan in, in March of last year. Uh, and then at about that time, uh, the board uh, directed staff to work closely with the MetroVision Issues Committee to review and pro pro propose uh, revisions uh, to the plan uh, that the board would consider. And in some ways, that's kind of what we're working through uh, this afternoon. So since April, um, INVIC was spending a lot of time doing that. For those that were involved with INVIC, you recognize that oftentimes we were meeting for two hours each month and sort of working through component by component, and we we're really going to continue um, that conversation uh, this evening. Uh, starting in April, uh, INVIC spent a few months on performance measures. 
Uh, my su suspicion is that this group will also will pick up that conversation uh, largely after we've had an objectives conversation. Uh, the group also spent a fair amount of time on uh, plan uh, outcomes and overarching themes, uh, which as the chair po pointed out have already been adopted. Uh, the board actually recommended adoption of those or adopted those back in January. And so in February, MVIC began the conversation on plan objectives, and we're really going to pick up that conversation this evening. And as the chair noted, uh, objectives associated with outcomes one through three, um, MVIC discussed in February, so we're really going to pick up the conversation uh, starting with, with outcome four. Um, attachment two, if you haven't sort of figured that out, is kind of the primary discussion um, item for the evening, so I would certainly uh, point your attention to that. Um, when, when the discussion starts, I'll, bring, I'll also bring that up on screen and do some track changes so you can, the group can see uh, any adjustments that are happening uh, on the fly. Um, as, as was noted previously, uh, for the MVIC members that have been involved, there were some slight changes, uh, really kind of structural changes to that to attachment two since the last time uh, you've seen this. And I'll, I'll largely describe what you're looking at so that you have a pretty good sense, and I'll kind of turn it over uh, to Jerry to kind of give you maybe the, the why uh, part of that. Um, let me pull up an example here that might be helpful. which hopefully you can see the screen relatively well. But um, so, for example, under, under outcome three, uh, as the chair sort of noted, uh, when, when INVIC discussed this in February, all of these objectives were kind of at the same level. And as the memo notes, one of the things that, that, that came up during that conversation uh, with INVIC is that the committee really felt that there were some that were kind of at different levels than others, right? And we, 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 we took that back and thought about it, and we thought that was a really good point and realized we should probably take a fresh look at all of the objectives and really go through an exercise to elevate some, um, as the memo says, to, to sort of raise the, change the altitude. Um, and so there's a series of objectives that are now called regional objectives that are most closely aligned with the, with the outcome that the, that the board um, has previously approved. The ones below that we're sort of calling supporting objectives. So when, when Envic had this conversation in February, we just the committee talked about them uh, sort of all all as, as all equals, and we have since kind of gone through and elevated some to what we're calling uh, regional objectives, and then ultimately did that for all 14 um, outcomes. Uh, in most cases, there was an existing objective that we simply just elevated, right? We looked at the four or five that were sitting there. We're like, this one is the one that makes the most sense to call a regional objective. Therefore, the remainder, uh, remaining ones are supporting objectives. In a few cases, there really wasn't something there that kind of felt like it was most closely aligned with the, with the outcome. So we went ahead and, uh, and drafted a new language there. Uh, the other kind of thing that we did that's a look, that you might see, and hopefully you can kind of see what's what's happened within within the attachment, is as as Invic and the and the board worked through uh, revising outcomes, it it seemed to make some sense to actually move some objectives around. Right, there used to be an objective under outcome ten that now made more sense in outcome eight based on how those two things had changed. So we kind of moved some stuff, some stuff around too. That's that's obviously um, pretty minor. Uh, so as I mentioned. Really, today's task is to kind of pick up where, where Invic um, left, left off. Um, as, as, as was mentioned, there is one new regional objective under outcome one that, that Invic didn't previously discuss that you've already um, began to sort of have a conversation about. Um, once you are okay with that, which I don't know if we officially did the straw poll or not, um, we can then obviously move on to, to regional objective four. Um, and all the, obviously, so regional outcome four and then the objectives that are, that are underneath that. Um, a few, just sort of, I want to tie up a few loose ends just because, so that we can begin the conversation. Uh, last month in February, Invic spent a fair amount of time on what is labeled uh, supporting objective 3.3 and ended up swapping out language and created a new objective that is now serving as 3.3. And there was a discussion at the time as, um, was staff okay with, with Invic going the direction that it went rather than the, the original staff? Uh, recommendation, and so we went and looked through, and we, we, we saw no issue with removing the previously staff recommended objective. There are a handful of other objectives that really felt pretty closely aligned uh, with what was previously recommended, and the, the memo actually sort of puts that language uh, in front of you. Uh, another item that's probably good to just everyone to be aware of before discussion starts, um, obviously we're trying to get to very short, concise objectives. But we are taking really good notes because the discussion is really important to us because 
Ultimately, what you're going to see once you have uh, uh, reviewed all of the objectives is you're going to see a set of narratives associated with them. Those narratives will, will add additional clarity, will maybe provide a few, um, some definitions, talk a little bit more in a robust fashion about what we're trying to accomplish with that objective, and that your discussion really helps staff uh, think through uh, those issues. Uh, the other thing that I'll just kind of mention uh, in passing is that the, the agenda does include an attachment three uh, that largely is there uh, for reference. Uh, prior to MVIC starting uh, their conversation on regional objectives uh, back in February, uh, the draft Metro Vision plan included somewhere in the order of 168 objectives, and I think everyone around the table felt like that might be a pretty heavy lift uh, to try to talk about 168 objectives one by one. Uh, so we went through a process to do a hard look at those, and a lot of them really made a lot more sense to be classified as what we're calling strategic initiatives. And so uh, attachment three just kind of shows you that we haven't lost anything. We just have transitioned things that will, will ultimately be talked about um, at, a, at a later conversation. So that's a lot of background, and hopefully uh, I appreciate the patience of the Invic folks that probably know most of that, but this was really geared towards maybe folks that haven't been around the table. Uh, and so with that, maybe I'll turn it over to Jerry to kind of give a little bit of a context um, setting in terms of the overall strategic planning framework. Sure. Thanks, Brad. Um, thank you. I, um, when Brad, Brad will get to the graphic here, and I know you, many of you have seen this a number of times, so this is really a refresher in some sense, but the benefit of those who have not been able to or have been here for the previous meetings if you start at the top of that structure, uh, the mission and vision are the two key pieces, and I think uh, you're probably aware that we've done a lot of work in that area over the last couple of years. Uh, strategic perspectives is a balanced scorecard term. I'm going to pass on that one. It's not essential at this stage. But themes and outcomes you are familiar with, I believe, if you've read a little bit. We have five themes in the MetroVision plan, and themes are associated with outcomes. We had some discussion over time about aspirational versus achievable some of you may recall those and outcomes tend to be aspirational you're moving out into a destination point and I'll call it driving a stake in the ground to say this is where we will end up so you start with your end point in the parlance of policy governance they are end statements but they are outcomes result statements one and the same so from those outcomes we can now develop the strategic objective or objectives which are the continuous improvement activities if we are to improve the safety and reliability of the multimodal transportation system there are probably some things uh, excuse me if this excuse me I'm going to restate the outcome this transportation system is safe and reliable I'm gonna paraphrase it if that's where we're going we've got to think about what continuous activities or improvements that we need to consider to get to that outcome and that's where the objective comes in it more or less operationalizes your strategy and its format is very distinct from an outcome in that it has a verb that tells you on the front end that tells you which direction is good so we get we run out of verbs pretty quickly uh, with that kind of model because Many of those verbs won't tell us which way is good and we'll have to define it, so we may be relegated to selecting just a handful. Um, so that, that is the regional objective one comes from outcome one. And what we want to do with those objectives is capture the variables within the outcome, but state it in such a way that gives us a continuous improvement potential. The next piece is a strategy map. That is another form of scorecard work where we can actually visualize the strategy. We may be able to do that with MetroVision, but we may not. But it's, it's not necessarily an absolute, but they are good. So from the objective component, we move into determining what does success look like for that objective? What would we see? What will we hear? What will we know about that would tell us we're making progress on that objective? From that discussion, the performance measures start to surface. Once we establish the performance measures, we start to talk about potential targets for those measures. Those performance measures and targets just tell us how well we are progressing toward our strategy or to our, our, our outcome in many cases. The last thing is what gives, what I say gives legs to objectives and measures, and those are the strategic initiatives. If we didn't have those in the plan, nothing would happen. 
Objectives don't do anything, and measures don't do anything unless they're activated with a strategic initiative. And those can be innumerable. I mean, just a multitude of possibilities. You do those in your own organizations already, I'm sure. You may call it something different, like projects, but um, that's how they all fit together. So if you look at the top of the model from mission all the way down to strategic initiatives, you move from strategic to tactical. I'll stop and see what questions you might have. Are there any questions of what either Brad or Jerry have uh, presented so far? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on, Brad. So again, the, the, the task or exercise this evening is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, the group will start with regional objective four, you know, find hopefully a comfort level that, that as stated on the, on the page, it works for you or whatever the, the, the adjustments that the, uh, that the board makes. And then we'll go on to the next one. It'll sort of be the chair's sort of feel and discretion as to whether uh, we're ready to move on. So obviously if you can give him some cues on that, I'm sure he would appreciate it. All right, first one up is the regional objective four. As it is stated, it's to expand the region's multimodal transportation system services and connection. Are there any comments or feedback on the regional objective? Ms. Jones. And I was looking at the, the verb expand, and I guess I'm wanting to replace it with enhance because expand um, it, it means to grow. I think we also want to improve the existing system. So in... I, I I struggle with what's the word that encompasses both. To me, that's enhanced, but I'm, but I do think improvement of the existing, truthfully, will will be, given our resources, a lot of the focus. So I think it should be something different than just expand. Okay, Mr. Teal. Well, I mean, I do think there is a requirement to expand what we have already. I mean, we're a growing region. Our roadways have to grow. Our multimodal systems have to grow. So they do have to expand. But at the same token, I really like what Elise was saying. You know, um, so perhaps expand and improve, because obviously I think there is room for improvement. Uh, but, you know, I, I like what you said about enhance. But Elise, I, I think it's important to kind of keep that word expand. So I'd go ahead and just say expand and improve. Works for me. Hey, Mr. Applebaum. Uh, yeah, I think that works for me too. Expand, I mean, expand has a physical connotation to it, and it's not the only thing we're considering here. And I say the same thing, frankly, about Objective 4.3, which talks about transit. In transit, we're not just talking about a physical expansion, we're talking about an improvement and enhancement. Um, I also have some problem with 4.1, which has increased the capacity of the regional roadway system. Um, the way that's written, the way I think most people would interpret it is to add lanes to something. And that is absolutely appropriate in some places, don't get me wrong. But what we're really trying to do is increase the ability of the roadway system to carry more people and maybe more goods. That's not always the same as increasing the capacity. There are other ways to accomplish that goal. And remember, the outcome is the regional transportation system is well connected and serves all modes of travel. So I'd probably like to change the word capacity there to All right, so let me ask you, something. We'll, we'll keep that there, but let's get the regional objective finalized, and then we'll move down okay. a level into the supporting objectives. But we will capture your comments for right well, now. Well, they're, they're kind of related because expand leads you to capacity and so on. So if you're going to change one, I think you have to realize that you have to look at some of the wording in the objectives to then be consistent with the wording you used up above. Okay, good point. Is there any other comments on the regional objective four? Mr. Graves? I'm sorry, let me go back. Jerry, you had a comment, then I'll come to you, Anthony. This is sort of back to my uh, conversation a second ago about the verbs and the objective. Um, improve would work, believe it or not, it, because remember you'll have that narrative. You could actually improvement would include expanding and improving existing so you could probably get by with one verb that way you can add a couple uh, if you'd like but if we talked about enhance or uh, a verb like that we'd probably want to define it a little more in the narrative too and we'd still have to do it with the verb improve but I think you could get 
to a verb like that, like improve, and include the expansion as well as existing? That would be just a thought. Okay. Mr. Graves. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I'm very comfortable with the changes that are being proposed. I just have a, a quick question for the body to consider. I've been thinking a lot about the recent presentations by Don Hunt and the questions about uh, autonomous vehicles, right, and what that may do to our system as they're introduced into the metro area in the state. And so I would just encourage everybody to think a little bit about how that fits into this in terms of future investments, et cetera. I don't know the answer myself, but I at least wanted to flag it for you guys as I'm thinking through it. I actually think that was going to be my comment regarding the capacity. To me, capacity actually means move the autonomous vehicles actually, um, it's my understanding, will be able to move more cars through if they are autonomous. They'll be closer together. They'll operate more um, cohesively. So we'll, the capacity will increase. So in my mind, when I read, see the word capacity, it's not just lane miles. that are. It's actually the throughput on our existing lanes. So, And I do think that that is really a, a shift in thinking, but I do think that's being well accepted by there. So I'm very comfortable, with, I guess, with the word capacity and was completely agree with uh, the comment. Okay, Ms. Graves. So I was just thinking that reversing the order, improve and expand, um, just because if we look at what's in place as the first priority or the first thing that we look at and then expand as the second. It f it, so expand as being the first word and then improve being the second word. It just feels like to me like it would be um, reversed and it would be more um, in the proper order. Okay. Do you have any other comments on the regional objective four? So we have a recommendation and there's two basically using the same words but the same words are reverse of each other. If we go with the last one of improve and expand, does that read better for the majority or does expand and improve read better for the majority? Let's go this way. All those that who would support leaving it as expand and improve, just raise your hands. All those in favor of improve and expand. Okay. We are going to use improve and expand. Is this objective ready to move forward to the board? Is there any further discussion on this regional objective? Mr. Partridge. I wonder if it wouldn't be wise if we just say and or. Because not necessarily will expand, improve, maybe, maybe not. But and or covers them both and allows both. Jerry. Um, you, you know, it, you don't have to, when you think of the measures, that's what I kind of move ahead, you know, not thinking about what those measures are, but the measures themselves will help you capture the level of expansion or not. So, and or probably wouldn't work as cleanly um, in terms of the objective format, but I'm, I'm not a theory guy on that necessarily. I don't see them written that way. And so it would be worthwhile discussion, but... Uh, my recommendation probably would just kind of stick with the conjunction and. As much as I love my county commissioner, I would have to say I would have to be opposed to throwing and or in there. I mean, come on, guys, this is an easy one to put, put a stake in, you know, put a stake in the ground and tie ourselves off to it and say that we do have an objective to improve and expand. And even though they may be mutually exclusive, um, that just might be the hard nut we have to crack. Because right? we have to do both. We have, an, we have existing structure. We have uh, an expanding communities. We are an expanding region. So I think we got to do both. So sorry, Roger, I got I, I to gotta be opposed to the or in there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any other comments? All right, the last vote I had was we were okay to move forward with improve and expand for regional objective four. I'm going to leave that to stand. We will now move to the supporting objectives. And Mr. Calvert, if there's any questions, we'll start with 4.1. Is there any comments? Mr. Applebaum, let's go back to yours. 
Yeah, so now that we have changed the first one, um, I, I do think it'd be better if we, I, I, I understand what Jackie's saying, and I don't really disagree, and in fact, the whole concept of some sort of autonomous vehicle does allow you to improve capacity without, kind of magically, without improving the infrastructure. But on the other hand, I still think somebody reading this would read capacity to mean adding lane miles, which is quite appropriate in some places. But the real goal is to improve the people carrying capacity of the roads. And that can happen in lots of ways. In some places, it absolutely is physical structure. In some places, it might be autonomous vehicles. And I think this does need to be clearer. It's a pretty important objective. OK, Ms. Kanish. Um, I, I absolutely get um, the principle that you are speaking from, Mayor. I would just say that if, if any portion of the system needs increasing, then the overall system will increase, right, just mathematically speaking. So I think that it's not saying each piece of the system needs to increase. It's just saying overall. Um, one possible way to clarify a little bit is, you know, increase the capacity of the multimodal regional roadway system to accommodate growth or to accommodate needs. Right, so it's it's it you know to maybe, I think that broadens it slightly. But I I would say that if any portion is going to grow with any lane mile, by virtue of that, the system will grow. So even though I agree with you on the principle, it just seems like we can get there with the language. But I, I appreciate the principle. Great, right. Ms. Stolzman. Thank you. I I agree with. Um, mm -hmm. Mayor Pro Tem Malay, uh, I think it's I think it is important to leave this in here. I agree and appreciate the point uh, that uh, Mr. Applebaum brought up, uh, but I th I think uh, Mr. Graves really really put this uh, together appropriately because he was talking about thinking ahead, and that's when we get to the strategic initiatives, yeah. and I think that's where we'll cover how we increase the capacity. But at this point, we just need to say we need to increase the capacity, and then when we get to that point, we can talk about the difference between adding lane miles and the autonomous vehicles. All right, Ms. Jones. I actually find myself agreeing with Mayor Applebaum because typically roadway capacity is a defined term that's adding lane miles. It's not figuring out how to, say, put in bus rapid transit or move more people specifically. So I just think I, I read that and go, oh, that's lane, that, that's additional lanes, which is fine, but it doesn't. I think adding, I think you use people carrying capacity, doesn't includes lane but lane miles, but it includes all the other things. Otherwise, you would look at this and you would say, oh, roadway capacity, that's adding concrete. So I think it's too limiting the way it's read. It reads right now. Jacob. Yeah, thank you very much, Jacob Rieger, Transportation Planning, and Dr. Cog. Just to clarify the intent here, you know, first, as Brad and Jerry mentioned earlier, when we get to the objective narratives, that will really help. It will encapsulate these things that you're talking about today in terms of the real intent um, explaining some of these words, but just sort of broad brush right now. You know, this region is going to grow by 1.2 million people, and so as staff are looking at this and saying, you know, we do need to expand our transportation system, but that means different things in different places at different times. It could mean new roadways, you know, uh, roadway network. It could mean adding lanes. Um, it could mean taking a road that today doesn't have transit service and adding, you know, say bus service, which itself expands the capacity of that road. Uh, it could mean better operating and managing that road uh, to increase the capacity uh, through operations and ITS or through, you know, eventually autonomous vehicles. You know, it can mean 20 different things, but the point is that over time as this region grows, our, our multimodal roadway system, and, and the multimodal is in there on purpose, needs to kind of grow with it. And that can mean so many different things beyond just, just adding lanes, and that's what the objective narrative is going to clarify. And I think you all are kind of touching on some of those things that, that it will include. Okay, thanks, Mr. Rieger. Ms. Mal uh, sorry, Director Malay, I'm being chal challenged up here to remember to use the new terminology for everybody. Uh, thank you. I, I, I was wondering if we switch the word from increase to improve the capacity. I mean, I know this is getting ridiculous, but it, does that address some of the concerns expressed by, um, by some of the Boulder folks? The Boulder directors. <laughs> <laughs> Just. Mr. Teal. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I don't know, guys. I mean, I look. Uh, I I think we. I realize we want to drill down on each one of these objectives and 
really you know move commas around and uh, do them do the grammar thing but really uh, uh, I harken back to, to guidance we've received from Jerry in the past where all these supporting objectives do need to we need to be asking do they support regional objective four in this instance and really I'm not much in favor of monkeying with objective 1.1 at all because I understand what everybody's saying, but then we see 4.3 expand the region's comprehensive transit system. 4.4 increase the bicycle and pedestrian accessibility. So, I mean, I get it. You guys are very concerned about expanding road miles. I do understand that, but we are seeing the mitigating factors expressed later in the subsequent objectives. Uh, 4.3, 4.4, 4 4.5. 4 so I'm, I, I am not uh, in favor of actually modifying that statement. Uh, given, given, uh, of course, the comments made, uh, uh, asking for something to be done with it, I think it's done, guys, if we take those other objectives in hand. Because, I mean, uh, I feel like uh, I'd have a really good argument against 4.4, but I really think 4.4 should stay there because it does support regional objective four as a whole. So I guess I would speak against making any changes to 4.1 as it's written at this time. Director Shakti. Um, I guess I would just say that um, we are being very detailed or specific about the words we use and so I, I mean, we just had this conversation about enhance and all of this. And as long as we're doing that, um, well, if we shouldn't do it, then we shouldn't do it for everything. And this the whole process would be like one one hundredth of the time. <laughs> but um, as long as we're doing it, um, I don't see why. So if we say increase the people carrying capacity, um, that clarifies it and um, probably that would include increasing the amount of mm -hmm. pavement because there are enough people that mm -hmm. we will need that to be part of the solution but it's not the focus so why don't we just say that all right I want to go to Miss Jones or director Jones first but just kind of reminder we do have the narratives coming up that's going to spend a lot of time building on this. So the, if you can look at the overall arching document, as we can't continue to move down, we're going to build on that, and a lot of this is going to get explained in the narrative. So honestly, wordsmithing every word, every period and comma in this thing is not really going to get us anything except spending a lot of time sitting in this room. And I'll be glad to turn that back over to Bob next time we meet. <laughs> Mr. Rieger, if you would, please. Sure. Uh -huh. Just I'm coming to Ms. Jones. One other piece of information to help in this conversation. From the big picture, from the transportation uh, perspective, dealing with both outcome four and outcome five, and we'll get to outcome five, but understand that in the big picture, outcome four is about providing a multimodal transportation system, a well-connected multimodal transportation system, and that's why you're seeing objectives kind of addressing each mode and then how those modes are connected and work together. Outcome five, when we get to it, is talking about um, you know, operating, you know, have a reliable, well-operated, you know, well-maintained system, and particularly um, supporting Objective 5.2, improving system performance and reliability, I think gets at some of these things that many of you are mentioning about, about how the system sort of operates or how it works. Uh, outcome four is really dealing with providing that system. So we do want to make that distinction, um, but I think collectively together, um, these outcomes and objectives address some of these things that you're talking about. And again, uh, we're starting to sound like a broken record, but the narratives really will help clarify the intent behind some of these individual words that we're puzzling over. Director Jones. So point well taken about the wordsmithing. I do want to get through this. So is, I'm willing to back off. I did like improve, by the way, Jackie. I think that that's a better word. But I'm willing to back off this if we can just make in our notes that the narrative needs to include the concept of person carrying capacity okay. and, and goods, freight and, and people, then I'm willing to let go of this and All right. keep moving. Director Applebaum. Use your mic. Oops, sorry. There you go. 
doesn't want me to really speak. Um, it's actually Anthony's doing it. Um, and, and I would make the same change in 4.3. I, I think what, what triggered this, and I understand that, that the word capacity is changing in meaning over time, but right now I think most people look at the word capacity and it really has one very well-known fixed meaning. And perhaps our narrative and perhaps our actions will help, in fact, change that meaning over time due to technology and, and other things. But look, right now it means one thing to most normal people. And that's what I think some of us are trying to, to capture here, that it, the, that meaning needs to be expanded in some way. And maybe the narrative helps, but you know, some people, a lot of people are just going to look at these short objectives. They're not going to read the narrative. And so while I don't want to fight over every word, when a word has a very well-known connotation, it does make a difference. So I think improve would be better in both places, but if people want to leave it as it is, no, this is not worth fighting to the death over by any means. Director Dyer? Yeah, um, so uh, I think for me, I'm, I'll go back to what, what Jerry indicated, that these are aspirational, um, and to me, we're doing sections at a time. I, mean, I think once we have a narrative, and I think the comments are very appreciative, once we have the narrative and performance measures, um, as well as strategic initiatives, uh, it'll flow very well. It'd be great to take uh, to take one one outcome from A to Z, but we're we're just not doing it that way. So it's it's um, I think we're all very anxious to sort of define something that's very aspirational, but I think uh, we just have to trust the process and and hear what everybody has to say and incorporate that. Mr. T Director Teal. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, again, I, I'd like to make the case of just increase. Uh, guys, I, I feel like I understand what everybody's saying. Of course there's need to improve capacity. But at the same token, we are a growing region. We are a region that does need some of those road miles, as Mr. Applebaum conceded in his very first comment. So let's just keep increase there. Uh, I just worry that we're starting to live in the la-la land of aspirations and we're ignoring the very real world where people have to get in, in a car on the road in order just to get to work. Director Malay. I, I think I think we're all on that page now, George. I think we're ready. I think we I think we we, we uh, I think we're ready to move on. So we let, I would say let's do the struggle. So let me ask this. Uh, I'd like to propose that uh, you give me an idea of if you are. I think I've watching some of the body language that people are ready to move on with these four or five uh, as, a, as a group. Potentially, uh, I will ask two items. One, is there a group that wants to change the word increase to improve in both 4.1 uh, and 4.3 and 4.4, four, I think is where it was looking at. So if there is a majority that would like to change that, otherwise I'm going to leave it the way it is and we'll capture this through the narrative. That is a question of the group. Do you want to change the word from increase to improve? If you do, raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I got about 10, 11. Those who do not want to change the word, please should do likewise. One, two, three, four, five. I didn't, are we doing it at all? I don't understand. Is every word going to be now improved? Just, just the three that I mentioned, 4-1, 4-3, four, and 4-4. Four, four. Point of clarification just yes, for the group. Can alternates vote since it's a straw poll at mm -hmm. these? If they are if they're here as the primary. But not if our primary is here. If your primary is here, well, your primary may not be here. <laughs> She's not in the room, so you can. <laughs> All right, so again, the purpose of this is to change the word on 4-1, 4-3, and 4-4. The first word would change to the word improve. That was the majority that I saw hands. We'll change those. Are there any other changes you're proposing under these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5? Otherwise, we will leave them till the narrative. All right, so we will move that on to the board as a recommendation. We will move on now to Regional Objective 5. Is there any comments or questions on Regional Objective 5 that you'd like to discuss? Director Teal, is your hand up? You're, you're just talking with it? Okay. 
<laughs> All right. Are there any comments or questions again on Regional Objective 5? Seeing none, we'll move that to the board. We'll move on to Supporting Objective 5, 1, 2, 3. And that's it, those three. Any comments on those three? Ms. M Director Malay. I just had a question regarding whether good condition is actually um, the appropriate adjective. Is it, it, and so I'm just going to ask staff where that came from. Good. So it's, it's a highly technical term. <laughs> <laughs> um, we did choose that on purpose, and, and this is a classic case, classic example of where we wanted to find this in the narrative. You know, some of the federal requirements, particularly around transit, talk about maintaining assets in good condition, and that's actually the term that they use. And the feds are starting to put some definitions behind that, asset management, state of good repair, you know, these sorts of terms that, that have been floating around, these buzzwords that, you know, we're finally starting through the federal transportation legislation performance-based planning, you know, of, of putting some meat on those bones about what those terms actually mean. So we chose that on purpose okay. um, with the idea that in the narrative we would describe, you know, some of these things and, and um, show that consistency with, with sort of the federal direction on performance-based transportation planning. Thank you. Any other questions or comments on 5-1, 5-2, or 5-3? Mr. Graves, Director Graves, Mr. Graves. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Both apply. Yeah. I, I just have a question here about 5.3, improve transportation, safety, and security. I, I wonder whether or not there might be any appetite to include improved transportation, ped, and bike safety. And, and let me tell you, Mr. Chairman, why I raise this question for the group. So the city of Denver has just announced that we are supporting the Vision Zero initiative, and so we're trying to give additional focus right now to ped and bike safety and reducing traffic fatalities in the city. So as we, we look at the, the regional vision, I'm wondering whether or not there, there might be an appetite to include the words bike and ped somewhere here. Thank you. You did, you did say bike and ped, correct? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Is there anyone else who would support changing the improved transportation to improve transportation bike and ped safety or something to that effect? You have a comment you'd like to make, Director Sernanik? I think it's all included. Okay. Okay. Director Stolzman. I think we should definitely include it in the narrative if we don't include it in the title. Yes. Okay. Uh, I've got Director Kanish and then I've got Director Jones. Did you have a comment? I was just going to say, we could, we could add the word transportation and security and safety for all modes, perhaps, but I think the narrative is also a good solution because I was anticipating where the conversation was going to go. All right. But Director we are Jones. very supportive of Denver. I was going to suggest what we just agreed to, so that's great. Um, I was also going <laughs> to, um, Don Hunt has been talking in his blueprint a lot about maximizing the efficiency or the effectiveness of the existing system. You know, and in his case, he's talking about harnessing technology so that um, we support the investment we've already made rather than undermine it, which we could, say, through Uber and Lyft, undermining, say, our transit system, or we could enhance it. And I'm just wondering, and this is a question for staff, is the notion of maximizing the investment in, in our existing system somewhere in the strategies or objectives? Because I think it's an important point. Um, that he keeps bringing up, and I just want to make sure it's somewhere in this. Yeah, Director, I would argue that that would be part of um, sub-objective, supporting objective 5.2. You know, the point there is to manage, manage well what you have. Oh, okay. Does and maybe we can just clarify that in the narrative yes. so that it, it can support that effort. All right, so what I hear so far is we've had a couple of discussions that there are some items that need clarification, but those would be handled in the narrative. And right now, I'm not seeing a move for any changes to the verbiage currently presented for 5.1, 5.2, or 5.3. Am I correct? By a show of hands, all those in favor of moving this forward to the board, please. I have everyone. Okay. Regional Objective 5 and the supporting objectives move forward to the board. Let's move to Regional Objective 6. Any comments, questions? 
Director Applebaum. It's, it's, it's a little bit of both. So, and I wasn't here for the previous ones, but 6A is about air quality, and then 6B, which is tucked in below, is about water quality because the outcome references both of them. But 6B seems to have no objectives attached to it. And really, the first two objectives for air quality are just as relevant to water quality, increased collaboration, local and regional partners on air and water quality, the next one increased public awareness of air and water quality issues. So I just kind of wonder if they couldn't be captured a little bit differently. Yes, objective 6-4 is, of course, only related to air, but, but the other two aren't. And this just kind of leaves water as a, almost like an afterthought here with, with nothing hanging off of it. So I just found that an odd ordering. Any other comments? Director Jones, I see well, you reaching for your mic. I had the same concern about why we're treating some of these differently. I don't know if there's a way to be efficient in how we treat them similar, but air and water quality both are important. <laughs> Ms. Reek, I'm sorry, Director Malay. I, mean, I, I don't under, I, I think it would be appropriate to say increase collaboration with local and regional partners on air and water quality initiatives. I don't, I don't see a problem with inserting water into the first, uh, into 6.2 and 6.3. And then the other question I have is that um, uh, I'm, I'm wondering why, and I apologize that I don't know, we're not specifically talk, talking about meeting the federal standards, which we're not meet with, with air quality right now, which we're not meeting. Ms. Dulles. I think the reason that why they're separated and treated differently is just what um, Jackie was talking about, is that we have specific strategic initiatives that we'll talk about with our ozone attainment, and that's why those were called out and why they weren't in the water. I think it's absolutely appropriate to call them out under the water section also, but I think this is just carryover that we have um, a specific task as Dr. Cog with the air quality and the water quality, something that we think is important, but it might not have the same measurables that we're looking for. Any other comments? Well, Director Applebaum. Yeah, I'll just try this again. And I mean, it's okay the way it is, just a little odd. I, I still think that object, the two objectives, the two regional objectives should kind of be up at the top, that 6.2 and 6.3 should reference air and water. And I think it's fine if 6.4 references just air and or if there were another objective about air that we have to meet, you know, federal requirements. Frankly, we have to meet federal requirements for water quality, too. Mm -hmm. um, it's not like you can ignore that. So there's a lot of overlap between the two. And again, for me, it was just a little weird to have three objectives for air and then, what, nothing for water? That seems odd. Okay. Ms. Schaffel? Yeah, I'm really going to defer to Jerry here, but I think that if we're going to add supporting objectives to water, we would probably want to keep them separate only for the purposes of developing measures and targets uh, and maybe even strategic initiatives. But um, I'll, like I said, I'll defer to Jerry on that. Keeping the objectives separate for uh, 6A and B? Mm -hmm. Not to, you know, what the conversation is is to, like outcome 6 has water and air included in the same uh, outcome, so why would we separate in we have a supporting objective 6A and one for 6B, one for air and one for water. So if we were going to have supporting objectives for 6A, would we not want to keep those, or excuse me, for 6B, would we not want those to be separate from the air ones just so that yeah. we could have measures, targets, strategic initiatives targeting those very specific air or water things as, as opposed to trying to do both in in a single measure mm -hmm. and, and target and objective. Yeah, there, yes, and there is a, there is a, you know, a sort of part of this process is you want to keep the variables and objectives as lean as possible. You want to keep your objectives stated as lean as possible. And we had some discussion about this one. I think at one time we might have wrapped it together, but it seemed logical to separate the two. Is that right, Brad? And then you're right, the supporting, I'm sorry? 
Oh, and the supporting objectives would would fall under it would make a little more sense, I think, if we had some of those. And then I heard the suggestion actually Jacob brought up and moving that up to the top to get it to sort of same elevation, I guess. But after that, you just you know you would put the supporting objectives in. Uh, but it was separated. One of the things you get into in terms of measurements get a little more complex the more variables you add into things. So that's one of the reasons we try to keep the objectives and separate them out and to get them real focused. That's the key right there. Director Partridge. I think Jennifer, I think you hit something uh, that was uh, I'm sensitive to. I agree with what you're where you're going with it because water when we talk about water quality uh, as not being water providers, transportation is not a water provider. And I think that's where I have a real challenge. I think you hit it on the head. Keep, uh, but transportation is more specific to uh, air quality, greenhouse emissions. So I think we ought to really keep that separative, uh, separate, and it really does get spelled out in our narrative. So I agree, keeping water quality separate. Director Dyke, I'll come back. To you. So I, I want to ask staff um, from a regional objective: Is there a need to have supporting objectives underneath it? Uh, if so, or if not, why? Uh, you know, the supporting objectives, I'm just going to choose the convenient example here. If you think about it in terms of strategy, uh, at the Metro Vision level, this is the broadest, most expansive strategy you will design. At the community level, you have different needs and different ways of supporting a regional objective based on what your community needs. You may want to increase bike and pet options that, that contribute to the improve the safety and reliability of the transportation system at a local level. So sometimes it helps you start to def define your strategy more clearly at the local level. So I think it, if we can come up with some supporting objectives, it would probably help a great deal. And, and I think uh, Director Dyack mentioned something, is that when you put them all together, that's when you see the stories. You can remember that linear framework we started with. When you see it all together, measures will tell you a lot. The measures you choose will tell you a lot about what that objective is in conjunction with the narrative. But, and I want to go back to Director Stoltzman's comment on a couple of occasions. She hit it right on the money, and that is the initiatives make the difference. What, are, what is this group or the board going to select to drive that objective? That's key. Director Jones? I don't want to muddy the waters, but, uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> but I'm going to. The other thing that we lost between this meeting and last meeting was the regional objective around water consumption and quantity and that just went away um, it, we used to have a regional objective 6.6 .6, reduce growth in regional per capita water consumption and our land use pattern regionally and locally impacts water consumption even though we're not as, as Roger pointed out um, uh, water suppliers directly w how we grow does impact our water consumption so it seems to me that's an important piece of our, our regional vision as well and I, I so I'm wondering why our regional objective around water? It's in objective eight now. Okay. It's, we didn't lose it, we just moved it. So we're separating quality and quantity on water. Okay. Right. So let me propose this. There's been a lot of discussion about whether or not to keep regional objective 6A and 6B either combined or separated. But if we leave 6A and 6B separated and we put supporting objective 6.2 and 6.3 that are specific to water <coughs> under 6B, worded very similar to what they are under 6A, is that satisfactory? I'm seeing a lot of heads go up and down. All right, that is my proposal as chair. All those in favor of that, please signify by your hands. And look like I got everybody. All right, so. I still have yes. an issue, though, with water quantity. Under, we have it under our ag lands, reducing per capita municipal and industrial water use. That doesn't quite make sense to me as the location for it, which is why I guess I missed that it was put there. But it, it, it's about quantity. I know, I'm just wondering if we shouldn't deal with water quality and quantity in a single objective under six. But or six, uh, I mean, because I think w like water is not just, a, I mean, 
our, our uh, the objective under eight is about municipal and industrial water consumption, which has is direct is not directly related to ag lands. I mean, obviously our water systems are related, but it's just an odd place to put anything about municipal water consumption. So I'm just struggling with that, and I wanted to deal with it before we left this objective to see if water should quality and quantity should be under a single regional objective. All right, so we have a recommendation. If you'll jump down to item eight, and it has a supporting objective of 6.6, .6. there's a recommendation to move that up to 6B under water so that the municipal and industrial water is all con uh, connected with that. So, Director Teal. I would speak against it. I mean, there's a very clear correlation guys we're watching agricultural land across our state dry up it's drying up because it's going to Aurora it's going to Denver it's going to a lot of our communities um, my own community is trying to purchase water rights in Weld County so really I like where it's at Elise I like it being down in objective 8 where we talk about the working agricultural lands and activities I don't understand how quantity works with the region has clean water and air and lower greenhouse gas emissions. I mean, yes, I get it. You want to talk about it all at once, but does it really match that outcome? Whereas we go down to outcome eight and the region's working agricultural lands and activities contribute to a strong regional food system. You know, that is where I think that quantity is best expressed, just like we've seen uh, originally written up. So I would, I would uh, speak against uh, that recommendation. All right, so any other comments? And we're only dealing with whether or not we should move objective 6.6 .6 up to 6B or we should leave it where it's at. The other part of 6B and 6A are determined. Is there any comments other than that? Is there a recommendation? Because I have two opposing recommendations. Is there any other comments on this? Director Kanish and then De uh, Director Applebaum. Sorry. We've talked a lot about efficiency. It seems efficient to move it just to keep things that are like together. I mean, just taking ourselves out of our seats to like the three people who will read this document. We've talked before about keeping like things together. Mm -hmm. And so I, for, for, you know, without getting into the substance at all, it seems to make some sense for efficiency. Director Applebaum? Yeah, I think, I think it should be moved too. I don't think people would look for something like this under an agricultural section. There's no question that there's a relationship to agriculture. Of course there is. But there's really more to it than just agriculture. I mean, there's lots of reasons cities would want to reduce per capita municipal industrial water use. We're not buying up ag water. We're trying to make ourselves more resilient in the light of upcoming droughts. That's why we might want to do it, to be more resilient. And I wouldn't look at an agriculture section to figure that out. Also, land use patterns has been, as has been noted, have a big impact on water use. And so I do think it should be moved up where somebody might look at it. You'd probably have to rejigger a couple of words up there um, in the outcome to make it fit, but I'm assuming that can be done pretty easily. Okay, Director Teal. I just had to comment, the people of Castle Rock do pay me $650 a month to consider substance. <laughs> I get it. We want to make everything nice and neat, but the substance is important as well, guys. All right. I have two opposing positions. I'm going to ask it this way. All those in favor of moving 6.6, .6? you have a comment? Yeah, I do. Okay. Director Malik, make it quick. I'm not comfortable moving it unless we change the outcome, guys, because it doesn't fit under outcome 6 either. So if we, I'm, I, I'm, not, I'm uncomfortable voting on this because I don't, Okay. I don't think it uh, it works in either place. So if we changed out to six to be something like the region is good stewards of its natural resources, fine, put it in there. But unless you change outcome six, it doesn't belong there either, in my opinion. So I would not be voting for either option. Okay. Next one I have is Director Stolzman and then Director Pfeiffer. Thank you. I think we should move it and ask the staff to take it offline and redo the wording in the regional objective 6B so that it flows correctly. I think, I think it can fit there and it will fit there well once staff has a chance to look at the words. Director Pfeiffer? Uh, well, maybe the compromise is just making it um, 
the outcome and objective right after the discussion of water. So right now it's number eight. Why not make it number seven so it's flowing in the document? Well, I, I mean, it's closer to the conversation. So if you're moving pages, you're going to move right in. I, I, I think we're going to reword the whole outcome eight or whatever number that we're on now. Six. Keep jumping around six. six. We're going to reword that whole thing, and I just don't want to revisit that. So I'm trying to find a different compromise here. Um, I think it's important for it to be standing on its own. Um, so it, it calls out the importance of that. So just trying to find something in the middle here so we can move it forward. Okay, so here, here's my, my recommendation. We've got a decision on all but 6.6. .6. Moving 6.6 .6 is causing some verbiage pieces with the, not only the supporting objective for 6B, but also the regional objective for that same one. What I would propose is that we ask staff to take a look at uh, how that could be potentially reworded, bring that back to us uh, before we decide to move 6.6 .6 up and see if that will work at that point. Otherwise, the other parts of 6A and 6B would be remain as they had been previously approved. Is that acceptable to the majority? Yeah. Okay. We're going to leave 6.6 .6 alone. We'll ask staff to take another look at that one and come back with another recommendation, sure. along with the objective uh, rewording as well. I have a follow-up. Yes, Director Millay. Um, I, I would also like staff to explore the language um, I prefer maximize the efficient use of municipal and industrial water to reduce per capita municipal and industrial water. I, I, I think that captures what we should be doing in better, so I would like that to be contemplated by staff as well. Okay. Jacob, you got all of this? For Brad? You okay? Yep. Okay. With that, we're going to move on. Uh, we will move Objective 6A and 6B without those connotations at this point. We'll move those to the full board. We're moving on to Regional Objective 7A, protect a variety of open spaces. Any comments on 7A? Seeing none, we'll move on to the supporting objective for 7.1. Okay. Key objective 7B. We'll move on. Supporting objective 7.2 and 7.3. Okay. Then I will uh, ask the, the okay, Mr. Graves, if you would please. So I'm sorry. I apologize, Commissioner Henry. Under 7.3, when it, it currently reads, improve multimodal linkages to and between the region's parks, open spaces, and developed areas, it, it might be beneficial to add the word uh, trails or do something with trail systems because that's really how you're driving those connections. Uh, Denver, I again, I apologize. I represent Denver, so I have to talk about what we're doing here periodically. Right now, we've got a lot of master planning efforts that are happening. We have Blueprint Denver we're looking at connectivity to key uh, trailways and so forth and how that impacts our neighbors. And so I, th I think it might be of interest to add somewhere in here trails. Mm -hmm. yeah. the, the only thing I would ask you to consider on this one, uh, look at the overall language and the part. Multimodal includes everything. I don't know that it, under the definition that we've been using it limits it to anything. So I think your con connotation is correct that that is included in there but if it needs to be spelled out in more detail that would be in the narrative perfect mr. chairman if it's included in the narrative I'm comfortable with that okay seeing no other recommendations on item 7a or 7b I want to ask for a, a vote of all those who are in favor of moving us forward to the board as published okay we're moving 7b I am going to get dinner out of Bob Roth this is done <laughs> telling you only got 35 more to go. All right, next item up is Regional Objective 8. And this uh, still contains 6.6, .6, but again, remember that staff will be re-looking at 6.6, .6, so let's work 
around this without connotation of 6.6. .6. So we are on Regional Objective 8. Any comments, questions, or objections to this? Director Malay? Uh, retain the region's agricultural capacity. I don't know that, that I, that's a land use decision that local governments make. I don't, if, if people want to rezone ag land into commercial land, that is a, so, so how are we maintaining this capacity then? I mean, I guess to me that doesn't seem, it's more than a idealistic goal. It's, it's, I, we could be expanding our capacity too. We could be going the other way. I don't, I'm just, I don't, I don't, I, I'm not comfortable with that. Director Teal. Um, so this is one that I'd be interested in hearing ideas of how to uh, manipulate it, but I mean, retaining the region's agricultural, agricultural capacity is in keeping with the Douglas County Master Plan. Therefore, I mean, I feel pretty confident uh, that I'm representing my people by leaving it as is. Happy to s welcome uh, wordsmithing here, but uh, I, I think that matches the people at Cass Rock and what they want to do. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> Director Jones. I find myself agreeing with Mr. Teal. Director Teal. <laughs> Dude, stop doing that. That's I know, not good Douglas for us. and Boulder County were like this. I, I'm very I, I sorry guess, about that. It's too bad you're not in agreement with the county. Uh, <laughs> no, I would say, I guess I I am not reading retain the capacity. It's, again, it's that word capacity. I, I see that is again, this is an aspirational vision to keep a, a vibrant agricultural economy and 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 the lands associated with that also includes infrastructure includes farmers markets so it's aspirational about not losing that piece of our heritage so i'm not reading into it what you're seeing in it jackie and i'm wondering if we can if there, maybe there's a better word than retain but i also think we can include in the narrative no <laughs> preserve i, I mean would, I, I think if, i would be because capacity is that is, no, it's, it's not, well, let's let's sorry. one at a time, and then I'll call on you. And Director Malay, I have you right back in the queue, right behind Director Partridge. So, Director Jones, are you finished? Hi. All right, uh, Director Partridge, and then Director Shakti. I'm of the same opinion on the word retain in the capacity, and I just have challenges with that. It's uh, we don't have the word retain in our master plan on, that, on capacity that I'm aware of in the Douglas County master plan. Certainly, uh, property rights are referred to, and I even look at it, if we want to increase the capacity of a road, maybe it's even going to take agricultural property. So I think we have to be very sensitive to the word retain because that, to me, sounds like it's going to be a property control issue. Director Sakti. This conversation made me think of a tour I was on last week that um, it's a food growing operation in Lakewood that serves restaurants and it could be on Mars and they don't use land. So I do think capacity is broader than agricultural land. Okay, Director Malay. I would be fine having staff look at and reading a narrative, but I, I, I don't want a local government to ever be, you know, um, I don't want this to be used potentially as a club for a local government that was trying to convert ag land into something else. And I guess that's my concern. So if I can be assured that that would not be happening, um, you know, when we say retain the region's agricultural capacity, I agree. It could be in, you know, more efficient production out of our existing lands, but I don't understand why we retain is probably the word I have the concern with. So I, I, I don't want to hold this whole thing up. Well, I'm, I'm happy to ask staff to work on it, recognizing my concern. Director Graves. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd actually like to propose uh, different wording here. Before I do, I just want to remind everybody that Denver is often not thought of as a jurisdiction that would support something dealing with agricultural capacity, but we're working on a billion dollar investment in our center city around the National Western Center, and the campus, the National Western Center campus with a number of strategic partners where ag science is going to be the cornerstone, right, of, of future development uh, in this part of Denver. So I'd like to propose that perhaps we say support continued agricultural capacity in the region. Okay. 
Director Sonatic. In uh, the referral to staff, I'll, I'll support that in that uh, one of the things we don't want to do is, uh, and I don't know about other jurisdictions, but we have land that's currently being used as agricultural but has been uh, zoned for industrial or commercial use for three decades. I would not want to use this as a, uh, a sense, a hammer on property, vested property rights and the battle that that might have. So, Okay. Before I make the call for a change, is there any more comments? Director Partridge? When you look at agriculture class classification and agricultural zoning, they're two different things. You can have an area that can be considered residential but has an agricultural classification. So I think we have to be very cautious again. So I certainly I think we're going down the right lane to have some changes on this. Okay. Any other comments? Director Jones? I just want to support the proposed rewrite because I think okay. it is it, it helps get at your concerns and I think it still retains the original meaning. Jerry? I'm sorry I missed the rewrite. It may make my point moot. The support, Continued. yeah, yeah, it's okay. I mean, you know, I would, I would improve the capacity, given the one example that was. I saw that news story, and it was a building that's inside, and they're growing herbs and things like that. But if you think about strategy for a moment, yeah, sorry, I don't know, maybe down, Nothing. down in your shop. <laughs> sorry, wasn't the one I was thinking about, or you were thinking about? It was a different one. <laughs> How about basil? I'll mention that. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, you got me off track. One of the things, too, one of the things, too, about strategy. Strategy is should never be a set it and forget it. So with all the potential future things coming up, autonomous cars and things like that, that'll be entertained when that starts coming into, if you will, our region and things like that through initiatives, I believe. And so one of the things you want to do is not worry so much about long-term things because Certainly, strategy is future focused, but if they haven't materialized yet, understand you have initiatives that will adjust your strategy and potentially you might change an objective, but it would run less of a chance of doing that than adding a different initiative or approving an initiative you want to drive something else. So, in the future oriented stuff, we'll have, or, or future oriented approach to strategy, we'll have opportunities to adjust to the changing climate, market, and things of that nature. Thank you. All right, at this point, I have a recommendation for changing the verbiage of the regional objective of number eight from what is currently posted to support continued agricultural capacity in the region. Is there any other suggestions for verbiage change? Seeing none, all those in favor of accepting the verbiage change as proposed, please raise your hands. Okay, any opposed? That's carried. We'll move forward with Regional Objective 8 as modified. Next item will be the supporting objectives 8, 2, 10, 2, and 10, 3. Are there any recommended changes or revisit of the verbiage contained in those supporting objectives? Seeing none, we will move forward and uh, support a move to support all three supporting objectives, keeping in mind we're still dealing with 6.6 .6 offline, and these will be added to Regional Objective 8. We are ready to move this forward to board. Is there any objection? Seeing none, Regional Objective 8 and Outcome 8 are moved forward. Moving on to uh, uh, Regional Objective 9A. Is there any questions on 9A? Seeing none, any questions on the re supporting regional objective 9.3? Mr. Applebaum, please. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just mention one. 9.3 itself is fine. It, it just seems like really that's the only objective. Um, that's the only way we're going to reduce the risk of hazards and their impact is by increasing open space and high risk areas. Um, I, and I wasn't here for previous conversations, so there might have been things that went away. So it's fine. I mean, we do this. It's exactly the right thing to do. But, boy, it seems like that's pretty limiting. 
Um, if you think of all the possible hazards and their impacts that are facing our communities, um, open space is not going to help mitigate a lot of them. <laughs> So if there were some other things that were in the mix previously that somehow went away, I'm kind of curious how it got kind of condensed down to just this one. Okay. Jerry? Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, if we added a few more. One of the things to, again, keep in mind, too, the way you differentiate these is through your initiative selection of the projects you selected to, uh, to attack that, if you will, reducing the risk of hazards and their impact. Um, but yes, that, that makes sense that some supporting objectives. So I, I don't know that I'd look at the supporting objectives as driving, literally driving that regional objective. I'd look at it as supporting it. What will drive it will be the strategic initiatives you select. Okay, Director Teal. So just to help out uh, Mr. Applebaum being a new member, uh, so uh, the, the real gist behind that is we live in an area of hazardous weather. We live in an area of hazardous geology. We live in an area that is uh, naturally changing and naturally evolving at all times. And so, um, I mean, I'm okay. I'd actually be interested in hearing some better ideas because Annalise actually was a big um, architect of this language because she pointed out the fact that uh, when the floods hit uh, Boulder County, there were so many individuals that were just stuck then in this um, continuing poverty condition uh, all because they happened to have land that was on flood prone areas. So the idea of just having increased open space in high risk areas is as again as Elise kind of kind of brilliantly pointed out it was it's a land use issue we're encouraging our local municipalities and governments to you know have those as open space as opposed to opening them for development. Uh, you know, uh, Denver having the Kennedy Golf Club uh, right underneath the Chatfield, or excuse me, right underneath the Cherry Creek uh, Dam. Hey, probably a good use of space, you know, as opposed to having uh, apartment buildings right underneath a earth berm dam. So that's the whole idea. Um, just to kind of bring people up to speed who I know I mean, Shakti and I were just talking about all the new faces. That's the whole idea, guys. Uh, could we put some more stuff there? Yeah, that'd be cool. I mean, uh, I'm interested in hearing ideas. Director Alpenbaum. Yeah, so again, I, I, 9.3 is fine. It's exactly one thing you might do. But more generally, since a lot of these objectives are pretty general in nature, you would use land use um, decisions to in fact reduce the risk of hazards. I mean, there's a lot of hazards. We're obviously kind of thinking about maybe without saying it, um, things like flood and fire. Um, certainly in Boulder, we think about those. Um, but more general than the open space, which is, a, which is certainly an initiative, no question about it, would be using your land use authority to try to ensure that you're not putting inappropriate uses in places that you know are at risk of hazard or of spreading hazards in the case of fire or of doing more damage downstream in the case of floods so I, I think maybe it got too narrow too quickly and either we need another more general objective or something like that I just again I'm just afraid somebody reads this and says well okay that's the only thing you can do but it's a much more general land use issue than just open space. Director Jones. So two different things, and I guess I would maybe suggest staff come back with, with um, some wording on this. Two areas that certainly in Boulder County, as, as Mayor Applebaum pointed out, that we're working on. One is to try not to increase, and I know this can be include some controversy, but not to, uh, to increase the, the intensity of development in high-risk areas. Um, so we're not adding additional um, development that's going to need to be saved for, from flood or fire is one. The other is to support mitigation of risk to existing development. A lot of communities, betcha Douglas County is doing this, um, are helping farm uh, uh, property owners um, reduce the wildfire risk around their homes and create defensible space. Those are super um, 
successful partnerships, the state's supporting some of them, their grant programs, a lot of local governments are doing them. I think that's the kind of thing that would also be appropriate to add in here. Mr. Calvert. So as I mentioned earlier, there is an attachment three that, as Jennifer and I were talking, it's kind of the parking lot where things that have, have been moved. And there are a few things in that parking lot that actually get directly to what Director Jones just talked about. Um, so we, we can have a conversation. If those feel more like supporting objectives, let's, let's move them back. Uh, there is, a, an, a, and I'll, I'll pull it up, I guess. And I went ahead and had that ready. Um, let's see. So I'm, I apologize, the first one's a little wonky, but we had an objective previously that was, that was limit expansion of the wildland urban interface, which is a sort of, a, again, a wonky way of, which, of Director Jones' first point about thinking about development in high-risk areas and how those, those ultimately uh, interface with each other. And then the second one was also to the Director Jones' second point was about uh, promote integrated planning and decision-making, which was really sort of what she was speaking to about uh, uh, stakeholders and, and, and folks that are really involved in this issue, issue working together so that best practices are, are implemented uh, to the benefit of, of property owners as well as to the to the local communities. So if the, if the group feels like these kind of are, are close, we can we can re-elevate those um, and then obviously we can you can decide whether those make sense and then we can have a conversation when the narratives uh, come before you as well. Director Kanish. Thank you. Um, I would never have gotten to Elisa's things from this language, so thank you for the crosswalk. I think I would pr probably prefer just to draft them rather than go back to these because they're so either, they're such terms of art or they're so general. I can't tell which it is, but so, I mean, I would, you know, something like expand use of best practices, uh, you know, in, in land management or something like that, right? You know, that, that, or, you know, even buffer zones. I mean, let's just call it what it is, you know, expand use of buffer zones for fire prevention. I mean, if that's the language, let's just say it. And then to me, um, I heard her talking about mitigation. So integrated planning and decision making to me doesn't at all get at mitigation. So it's like, you know, improve, improve, you know, systems for, um, you know, uh, mitigation and response, right, or something like that. That I mean, it's just, let's name them a little more specifically. I, I would prefer not to go back to this language. My guess is maybe it didn't make the cut earlier because it was so general. So I'd prefer just to start with some new stuff. So let me propose this. Uh, I'd like to propose that we ask staff to come back and look at some of the attachment three items. We will table 9A until we have a revision of this by staff and to bring it back to us at the next meeting. Is that acceptable to the group? I see a bunch of heads going up and down and we'll, we'll move on. All right, we'll move on to 9B. Is there any questions or comments on regional objective 9B? Ms. Malay. I, I guess part of what I'm, uh, Douglas County in, in Lone Tree's part of it is going through this emergency management um, assessment and we're working kind of coordinating together because dealing with some of the man-made <laughs> risks and we've had some tabletop exercises, we've done a whole number, a host of things that I actually think make a lot of sense and I think they should be part of the best practices of this region and I'm wondering where that fits in here. Um, enhancing community resiliency, is that going to be expanded to talk about things like that, that the preparation of these emergency response plans are a good practice and that, um, and, and those I would say would, would actually be under a natural risk in addition to it. And it seems like we're silent on that and it's something that we're all kind of doing. So I, I would think we would want to incorporate that. Jerry. Yes, thank you. Uh, I was just going to respond to Director Malay. Um, those are become, the example you gave would be something like an initiative you would put together. So that's really what you're doing is you've captured this major project in this, I'm not sure how you described it, uh, Jackie, in terms of the tabletop exercises of what I heard, but that is an initiative that gets the preparation done that will support the overall improvement in hazard mitigation, whatever objective you might like, you know, something along those lines. I agree. I, my concern was that that I understand that that's an initiative. I'm wondering where the language is in a, a supporting objective for that initiative. And gotcha. I, okay. My, that was my question. So is enhancing community resili resiliency and the narrative associated with that going to address this emergency preparedness issue that um, I think is very important for, for all of our communities? I mean, we had Excel presenting at council last night, and one of the things 
they were they were asking about was the security of the grid. They were they said we can't tell you, but you know those, we're we're all looking at the security of our our infrastructure. If there were, God forbid, something to happen on a on a bridge or a roadway or a hazardous spill. I mean, where are those things that we all they're all realities of our community. So where is that dealt with in this plan? Is my question. Gary. Okay, yeah, I mean, this is sort of the, the thing with objectives. As I read improved disaster response and recovery, first thing I can think of, let's get the county and the, and the municipalities together and do a tabletop exercise and get everybody prepared. Da, da, da. So that's the initiative as I hear it. I would link it to that 9B. Right, does that make sense? I, I might have missed that first point, I'm sorry. Okay, Jennifer? I, I think maybe what's not clear is we're talking, you're talking about initiatives and so is she, but we're not talking about where that falls into this overall plan. Okay. So we've got outcomes that we've approved here on the, on the left-hand side. You're working on objectives right now. We're going to go back through uh, measures and targets, and then strategic initiatives, and those are going to be things that we would be doing here, Dr. Cog, as well as those things like that. Uh, kind of planning that you were talking about, Jackie, that, that uh, local jurisdictions would be, wor or even others would be working on. <laughs> so it's, it's coming, but we just haven't gotten there yet. I, I guess I'm not being clear. So in the, in the narrative on it, enhanced community resiliency, are we going to be talking about things like, in the narrative we're going to be talking about preparing emergency plan, you know, kind of that concept. Oh, that's my yeah. question. Is that, is, it, is, that, is that objective where this falls under, are those initiatives tied to? And when we talk about, when we flush out that narrative, is that where these issues that I'm raising are going to be addressed? And, I, and that was my... Yes, and, and, and actually I think probably under the regional objective 9B, maybe even more so. But, but uh, under this suite, yes. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. Okay. Any other comments or questions on supporting objectives under 9B? If not, then I move that we take objective uh, 9B and move it to the board. Agreed. Thank you, Mr. Sinatic. Hearing, hearing no objection, we will move it to the board. <laughs> so we have uh, 9A and 9B have both been moved to the board. Moving on to key objective 10. Any comments or questions on key objective 10? Seeing none, we'll move on to supporting objective 10-1 and 10-4. Any comments, questions? Seeing no movement, we will move a key objective 10 and supporting objectives to the board. Moving on to outcome 11. And folks, we have about uh, 15 minutes left, and then we will be adjourning for the evening with all the great work that you have all done. Moving on to regional objective 11. Any comments or questions? Seeing none, we'll move on to supporting objectives 11, 2, 3, and 4. Any comments or questions? Director Cernanek. I'm sorry, uh, Director Pfeiffer. Uh, on this one, um, knowing what, what has been happening in the area of technology and uh, remote access for advice, um, telemedicine is the, the technical term for it, uh, and um, it's n <laughs> those locations don't have to be necessarily physically accessible. Uh, and just a, a note somewhere along the line that accessible could be through technology as well. Okay. Good point, Mr. Sinatic. Any other comments or questions on 11, 2, 3, or 4? Okay. With no objections, we will move regional objective 11 and its supporting objectives to the board. Seeing no objection, we'll move. Next item will be a regional objective 12. Seeing no comments, we'll move to supporting objective 12-1 and 12-2. OK, 
Okay, seeing no movement. If there are no objections, we will move objective 12 to the board. <laughs> I can promise you it's going to be expensive for Bob. <laughs> trying to think where I can go that can spend a few hundred bucks of his dollars. <laughs> Moving on to number 13, regional objective 13. <coughs> Seeing no movement, we will accept a regional objective 13, move to supporting objective 13-1, 13-3, and 13-4. Any comments, recommendations, objections? Director Partridge. Mr. Chair, you are so fast, my brain's not thinking that fast tonight. I'm gonna, That's why I'm trying to hurry. I know. <laughs> <laughs> You're catching me off guard. Yes. Uh, I'm actually back on 12.2, and I, can just, I may just ask a question. To increase the opportunities for diverse housing accessible to transit, I'm wondering if we should make that more multimodal, because now we're isolating to transit only. And I'm going to refer to Castle Rock because they're not having transit, but they do good work in other ways, whether it's bus, whether it's um, uh, uh, senior shuttle, you know, so it is there, but I think it limits us if we just say transit. Is there something you're doing, Director Teal, that's not considered transit? Well, in this case, I guess you're calling on me. Yes. No, I, I completely agree, actually, with uh, Commissioner Partridge. I do think, uh, you know, once again, we're calling out transit, and we are, you know, calling out the haves and have-nots within our region. And we are automatically being divisive by saying, well, this is uh, automatically in favor of those that have transit, and so those of us who do not, once again, we are uh, uh, supporting an objective that actually does not address all the uh, municipalities and governments within the region. Director Shakti. Does a bus count as transit? Yeah. I, yeah. A, a bus, bus yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Director Jones. But it, this language would not include the senior bike paths that you're installing in Castle Rock. So I, I think point for all, the bike paths are for everyone, Luis. I'm kidding. <laughs> we, have a, so, we have freshmen, sophomore, junior, and senior bike paths, and bike paths that are open to all ages and grades. <laughs> so I, 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 I want to resist uh, having the urge to fight about whether or not we should, um, you know, support development options near transit and transit-oriented development, because those are, that, that's a big conversation. I think it's sort of core to a lot of the work that we do. Um, I'm not against the idea of expanding to multimodal options to the degree that people feel like, you know, carpools aren't transit because they're a little bit different. Um, like so, so if you replace transit with multimodal options, multimodal transportation system. Yeah. Why don't we say that? Well, I don't know. It's system might be is a big word, so I'd say multimodal transportation options, because your shuttle might be. I don't know what's a system. Okay. So I'm just saying options. Okay, Fine. Director Henry. I, I'm going to have to agree with uh, Director Partridge in regards to this because in Brighton they have no bus system. and Bennett they have no bus system. Um, so again in our suburban areas are being excluded because of the fact that you know a lot of the areas don't have transit. And diverse housing is needed throughout our community not just in the transit areas. Okay, Mr. Calvert. Yeah, so this, this is one that's hard without a narrative, but just so you understand, this is actually something that the um, housing uh, ad hoc committee talked about, and the idea was you can not only take um, housing to transit, you can take transit to housing, right? So the idea is let's just think about making sure um, as many households as possible have access to transit, and so you can accomplish that one of either way. So. Okay, Director Malay. And having participated in that the housing group, I, I do think that it was meant to be broader, though, at least from my perspective there. And, and I, I don't see a problem by saying, by saying increased opportunities for diverse housing accessible to the multimodal transportation system. Because to me, if you put, um, you know, senior housing that's in walking distance to the hospital or anything else that they want to be near, that's diverse housing, and it's accessible by 
not just transit. They can walk there. They could bike there. And God forbid, take a shuttle or even, you know, a group taking a car. I mean, or I, to me, I don't, I, I don't think it needs to be limited to just transit. Director Teal. Yeah, I'd like to support uh, Director Malay in uh, saying that uh, changing that to accessible to multimodal transportation system, I think that's far more inclusive. That includes all of us that, just like, uh, you know, the Commissioner from Adams County said, uh, you know, that includes all of us that do not hand transit right now because we are trying to, uh, we're trying to do something and um, we just don't have transit to do it with. So I think that's great. I think that's inclusive. I would support that change in language. Director Dick. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would want to correct the uh, director from Adams County, but uh, be assured that the Federal Heights doesn't have a, a uh, bus transit system either. So it hasn't and it probably never will. All Thank right. You. Director Pfeiffer. So I, I have some reservation around the word system um, because of the rural communities don't are not part of the bigger system and their system might be smaller so I, I would take the word system out in my preference Option. or just multimodal transportation they should have ex accessibility to the multimodal or to multi yeah multimodal transportation and that lets all the communities define it themselves director Stolzman Thank you. It's interesting that at MVIC I spend a lot of time looking up words. Uh, <laughs> but I, multimodal transportation is fine. When I looked up the definition of transit, it was also fine. It means the same thing as multimodal transportation, as it turns out. I've also now had to look up the word capacity, and that means what I thought it did also. <laughs> um, but this looks, this looks really good, and uh, I, I think it was all right before, but this is acceptable. All right, I have a recommendation to modify 12.2 as you see it on the board. Is there any objection to the modification that's being proposed? The option should be at the end. Oh, no. No, no, no. Yes. All right, Ms. Kanish. Thank you. I'm sorry I had to step out. I got a call from Angola, for real. Um, <laughs> But um, I just wanted to say I'm, I'm fine with the change, um, but I would say that there is a very special connection in terms of mass transit, in terms of cost savings. Uh, there's a number of federal initiatives and things like that. So as long as none of this change forecloses a little more specificity at the later stages um, to actually talking about transit, because it is, it's got a special status in terms of cost savings job access and things like that. And so um, I would like to make sure that nothing forecloses our ability to, to dial in a little more specifically at later points. To but, my, my understanding, yeah. Director Kanish, that is not an issue. Okay, great. Thank you. And again, I apologize for missing no problem. a minute. All right. So with this recommended change, all those in favor of the change going to the board as modified, please raise your hands. Seeing like we have a majority, we will move 12-2 as modified. And now we will move back to Regional Objective 13. Seeing no movement on 13, we will move to Supporting Objective 13, 1, 3, and 4. Director Malay. I'm just wondering if we should also include under objective 13.4 uh, housing and employment centers. And where would you recommend that? Improve access to and from the regions developed and emerging housing and employment centers. Is there any other comments on 13, 1, 3, or 4? Director Teal. Uh, I would support uh, Chairman Malay's, uh, form, excuse me, uh, Director Malay's. Uh, yeah, I know. Sorry about that. Sorry to rub the salt there. Um, I would support her, uh, her change to add uh, housing and employment centers as well. Director Partridge. Under 13.3, just asking a question regarding populations. Would uh, just saying underserved populations, asking staff, would that include handicap? Is handicap considered a population? Yes. Under, okay. 
Director Dag. Uh, I, I just want to follow up on Director Malay's, uh, I guess, comment. Is <laughs> is that too broad um, for a objective? Um, if you include housing, or is that okay? Jerry, <laughs> do you see any issues with with adding that? Adding housing, not not in the. Let's see, uh, housing is part of the key variable in that outcome, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, so I mean, what it does, it just triggers you on the sort of the metric when you get to the measure discussion, mm -hmm. um, and that's where we get into this thing where sometimes the objective slightly replicates the outcome, but it should grab those variables. Uh, so housing and employment, I think we've we've captured those in the urban center one too, right? So when we capture them together, it probably makes sense. Well, I, and if I could just speak to it, I think that Director Henry raised a lot of issues that sub suburban communities face, that they're, they're housing centers, they're not employment centers, and I think it's important that we actually improve access to and from those housing centers to get, to get people moving in different ways in addition to the employment center. So that's what I'm driving at there. I'm missing somebody over here on the other side. Nope. Okay. All right. Out of objective uh, 13.1, 13.3, and 13.4, I have one recommended change, and that's adding the word housing and in 13.4. Are there any other proposed changes or modifications? Seeing none, I propose that we move the objectives 13.1, 3, and 4 with modifications to the board. Are there any objections? Seeing none, we are moving. Regional Objective 14. Wow. Any comments, questions on Regional Objective 14? Seeing none, we'll move to Supporting Objective 13.2 and 14.1. And Any comments or questions on this one? Don't everybody give up because you could, could get out on time. <laughs> Seeing no modified changes, I move that we move uh, Objective 14 to the board. Are there any objections? No, not an objection. Okay. All right, on the next meeting, Mr. Cernanic, I'm sorry. Uh, just uh, a couple of items and hopefully the Brad and, uh, and Jennifer might be able to address. Um, one is we move to performance measures. What's the schedule for that? How are we going to see them? And uh, request that uh, as we look at MAP 21 moving from our RPO responsibilities to our MPO responsibilities that maybe we can tie some of those together. Um, and uh, for Mr. Stiegel, uh, the question is, as we do get to performance measures, my experience is that we may look at the wording in our objectives and bounce back a little bit. And so that's kind of a warning for the group uh, that we might want to uh, have, uh, have said that so that as we get to the board consideration, uh, there's actually a prefacing comment that says, uh, don't spend a lot of time on wordsmithing, because when you get to the objectives, you may actually change some of the words. Um, it, it happens very frequently because you just get you get better as you do more of it and you get more informed you get a little smarter so to speak we all get a little smarter as we do more of it so it will cause you to maybe go back and refine a couple of things but you know it's also not a precise you know strategy is just not this cro dot the i cross the t kind of thing so it's it, that's where we kind of struggle a little bit i think as we expected an excel spreadsheet and it's really not but um Yes, the, the measure discussion, all that, uh, those will be tied to the objectives, and I think it will go really well. All right, just as a reminder, the next meeting we'll be bringing back the suggested modifications and the staff rework to the objectives. We'll also start with the narratives for all objectives at the next meeting. With that, ladies and gentlemen, we are adjourned. <laughs>